The process of faceting gemstones is often called gem cutting, but after the initial trimming stage, there's very little cutting involved. And all of the steps are actually a grinding process, making flat faces on the stone called facets. And with those facets, they can be arranged in almost every possible angle to make different combinations of designs and light play across the stones. But there are some commonalities between different stones of different looks, and it may be helpful to go through and talk about some of those. Now in a typical stone profile, the top of the stone, the flat facet, is called the table. That table caps off the crown, which is the top part of the stone, above the girdle, which is about this horizontal plane here, where it goes from going out to going back in. And then below the girdle is the pavilion. The proportions of the crown to pavilion to width and height are design dependent. But the girdle, for example, is very frequently between 0.3 and 0.5 millimeters. On the crown, or the top half of the stone, lit up here on the left is that triangle, and that would be a star facet, which is a typically small facet around the edge of the table, so that's in the center of the image here. And those are added to introduce more light play into the table and increase the scintillation of light within the stone. In addition to the star facets, there are main facets, which are these more elongated facets on this particular stone, and those are set at a specific angle, typically the sort of idealized angle for the refractive index of the stone. And then you have break facets, which help add more light into the stone as well, and breaking up the main facets so they don't just overwhelm the edges of the stone. So adding more light play as well. There are designs that don't require all of those facets. For example, this is a Baryon cut, which is characterized by eight sort of diamond facets on the table. And so there isn't a flat table with this, with this cut design. In addition, the main facets don't have to be all the way down, you know, per perpendicular to the table. This is a step cut stone where the step cut refers to the rectangular elongated facets that go down sort of in steps from the table towards the girdle. These can also be on the underside on the pavilion and it would be a step cut stone top and bottom, whereas this is a mixed cut because it's a step cut on top and then the bottom cut is a more typical, brilliant, faceted design. Uh, the pavilion is the entire area under the girdle. This stone is upside down, and many pavilions come to a point like this, and the point of the pavilion, the very bottom 10% or so, is called the culet. And in a lot of stones, in a lot of designs, if you have color only in one area of the stone, you typically want to focus that in the culet because then that will disperse that color throughout the rest of the stone. However, not all stones need a culet. This pavilion doesn't have one because it's a uh, elongated cushion shape, almost an oval, but it just goes down into a sort of uh, boat shape almost. It's appropriately called a keel when it has just a flat bottom uh, culet. I hope that helps in following along with some of the videos that I've put out here, where when I talk about main facets and break facets and tables and pavilions and girdles and all that, hopefully now you have a better understanding of what I'm talking about.